name is Jessica Dawson from Jessica Hits the Road and today we're going back to basics. So today we're making the first recipe that I made by myself in the kitchen. I was seven years old and I made a key lime pie from our family's cookbook. The whole process can be kind of broken up into three steps. We're going to do the crust, we'll do the filling, and then we'll do the topping. Each of them have about three ingredients. So prep time on this is about 10 minutes. Let's get started. So this crust is made up of three different things. It's the graham crackers, it's the sugar, and it's the butter. So 22 squares into a plastic bag. Take your rolling pin or whatever you have and just start to crush it. And this is something that you should make after you've had like a long, hard day. <laughs> and you want something that essentially looks like sand, but that looks really good to me. So I'll take it out and I'll show you what we're looking for. But can you see how there's like a few big chunks, but it's mostly really refined? That's what we're looking for. So we're going into our bowl, it has nothing in it. And then all we have to add now is our sugar. So granulated sugar goes right in. Now we're going in with our butter. And this is melted butter. I took it right out of the fridge, I melted it. Again, going back to like our sand, what do you call it, an analogy? <laughs> our sand analogy. We want wet sand, and this looks perfect. Then go into the pie plate with the rest of the crust that you haven't eaten, and we'll just spread it out. So at this point, just pat it down. And what we want really is just to make room for that filling, so press it up the sides of the edges. And if you see any kind of chunks of sugar, which we do have, that's totally fine. That's gonna disperse while it's baking. So into the oven we go. Now we're making the filling. The filling's just three ingredients. So we have our sweetened condensed milk, we have our egg yolks, and we have our key lime juice. And all you need is a big bowl and a whisk for this. So we're gonna pour it right in. And you can see how thick it is. You may need a spatula as well. There we go. And so now I'm just gonna make sure that I get all of it out of this can. Now we're gonna go in with our three egg yolks and look how bright they are. The reason that these are so bright is actually because of the feed of the chickens. And then we're going to go in with our key lime juice. You don't have to do this all in order. You could go right into this bowl. And it's like half a cup of key lime juice, to be honest with you. And everybody for baking says like, you can't change it, you can't change it. If you know how your ingredients work, you can always change it. <laughs> And so if you taste the pie and you're like, mm, that needs a little bit more like juice, absolutely, add a little bit more. All we need to do is mix this together. And we pulled our crust out of the oven probably at this point, like five minutes ago. It's totally fine. Another thing that you could do is you can do the crust, you can pour in the filling, you can bake it, and then you can wrap it and put it in the fridge for like, three days before you need to use it. And so that's totally fine. Now we're going to go into our crust. All right, so we're going to the oven. The middle rack is fine. I wouldn't do the top rack. The way that a like, conventional oven works is the heat comes from the bottom and reflects off the top. And so if it's reflecting off the top, it's gonna bake faster on the top. And so we don't want this to be kind of chewy, if you will, and bake too fast on the top. <laughs> All right, so what I have set up here is our egg whites, which we did beforehand. Um, we have six tablespoons of sugar. We have our cream of tartar, which is going to stabilize everything, and essentially that means it's gonna keep it from weeping or it's gonna keep um, our, our meringue from being sad. <laughs> Essentially what the egg whites want to do after you've whipped them is they want to go back to their natural state. So they don't want to stay really nice and whipped. They want to go back to a liquid form and the cream of tartar helps them to not do that. We also have our natural vanilla, which we could measure or you can just go with a splash of it, which is what we'll do. At this point, we're going to start to whisk the egg whites and nothing else is in there. So you only need those egg whites. So if you're 
you want to take a look. It's really foamy. It looks kind of like the perfect bubble pack. Like, not too much bubbles. And that's what we want. So that means that we can start to add a little bit of sugar at a time. And when I'm halfway through this, I'll add the cream of tartar. So we'll do one more addition. And the cream of tartar is just a quarter of a teaspoon. You go from like this really funny like bath water look, right? And then it starts to get more white. So it starts to get whiter. And then the meringue does this funny thing where it's like rising, but then it goes towards the center of the whisk. And so when it starts to go towards the center of the whisk, it almost gets pulled in and it looks like it's going lower on the sides of your bowl. That's when you know that you're just about there. You're also going to see streaks in that meringue. And so when that whisk starts pulling really visible streaks, you probably have about two more minutes. So that whole time that your pie is in the oven, you're working on your meringue. So we're not looking for um, stiff peaks here. So it's okay if it folds over kind of like a Santa hat. So this looks good. So nice. Do you see how it just like folds over? Love that. And it's ready to go on. That's actually our timer. <laughs> Perfect timing. So when I was pulling this out of the oven when I was seven and my mom was in her office downstairs, I remember I was on one of the swivel chairs. So we have these like big swivel chairs that we still have. We've moved since. But I would climb up on it and I would go in the top. We had two ovens. We had a top oven and we had a bottom oven. And I used the top oven because <laughs> that made sense. And so I climbed up on that swivel chair and I remember swiveling as I took the door down and I pulled this out and it just, it changed everything for me because this is the recipe I started with. And I've since like for eight years worked in professional kitchens and just love this recipe. Oh my god, yes. Oh my god, and it smells so good. So first I go right in the middle. We're gonna spread it out, but I go right into the middle with it. I'm gonna go ahead and I just take an offset spatula and start to spread it to the edges. And you can choose if you want to spread it over the crust or not. Um, I actually, I really enjoy the look of the crust, but if it gets too dark, a really good note is to go over the crust with the meringue and the meringue will protect it. Now, the last thing that I do with this, so you spread it out really nicely, right? What we've traditionally always done is we like go in and we make these peaks with it. And so this is very much so like what my grandma always did. You don't need to do it, but it makes it really beautiful and really nice. It's like a sea of meringue. <laughs> All right, and that's it. Now we're going into the oven with it, but always lick the spatula. <laughs> Don't waste. <laughs> Don't waste anything. I'm all about not wasting like even with the eggshells, we compost those. With the meringue spatulas, we lick them. <laughs> Don't waste the thing. <laughs> so it's gonna be really hot, but we're going back into that 350 degree oven. And this is all about visual. So everybody's oven is cooking at a different rate. And so watch it. Like, turn on the light. That's what I always do at this point. So I turn on the light, I look in the oven a lot. If you love your pie, you can sit in front of the oven and you can watch it. I do that with macarons a lot, but I love to watch um, how it turns like this really nice golden brown in a matter of minutes once it starts. So once it starts to turn golden brown, it's not going to stop. So you want to watch uh, really carefully when it hits like eight minutes. All right, we're going to check it. So really fast, I can't open it for long, but if you want to see like See how they're almost turning brown? They're just getting color. And it looks almost like it's pink. So when it looks almost like it's pink, that's when it's about to start browning. 
um, you do not want to open the door a lot because at that point, once you do, you want the meringue to set, right? But if you keep opening it up and it starts to cool down, it's going to wilt a lot. And so what we're looking for is that these peaks stay standing up. Um, and that was eight minutes. And so it, times are guidelines. They're definitely not hard and fast rules. Just like how we added more key lime juice. That's not a hard and fast rule. And a lot of times for pastry, people will tell you that it's a hard and fast rule. But the truth is, if you know what you're looking for, you can make anything. And so that's a really good lesson with our meringue, is that you want to look at it. It looks kind of pink. It's not browning. So it needs three more minutes. So we're going to set the timer for like three more minutes. And we'll check back. All right, so let's look. This is almost perfect. All right, that's our timer. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna pull it right off the oven. And this looks perfect. It's really nice, we have even browning. You can see it. So how do you know if you overcooked it? It's actually really easy to know because it's burnt. And so you'll see that the top of the peaks will start to look extraordinarily brown, just too brown. But that's also about like mixing the meringue enough. And so that's also about making sure that you get nice peaks, not stiff peaks, but nice peaks with your meringue. What we really want is for even browning and we totally have achieved that. Now, the hardest part, <laughs> truly the hardest part of this pie is waiting. I'm sorry, you have to wait. <laughs> If you cut it into it now because it's a custard pie, we set it with egg yolks, it's going to completely spill like a bath. Like a <laughs> I'm looking for a really good simile for you. It's just going to be bad. <laughs> At the end of the day, what's going to happen if you cut into your pie now is all of your filling is going to leak out right where you had that piece of pie and took it out, but it's worth the wait. And so as you're driving to your friend's house far away, you can put it like in the back seat. You can't buckle it in, but you can put it in the back seat next to one of your children who will hold it with a towel. <laughs> and that's how you're going to bring this to your dinner party. And by the time you have dessert, it will be cool and ready to go.